Welcome to Set the Record. I'm Malcolm Anthony, all the way from Houston, Texas. We got Cody. Yeah, I what a do from 713, baby. B. Yo, Editor-in-Chief right there. Subscribe to the show wherever you're watching on YouTube, of course, listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. Give us five stars. We out here working. Look, follow us on TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, Set the Record Pod. Like the Facebook page, Set the Record Podcast. Great show planned. NBA played. Football on the horizon. Man, we've got a great week ahead of us as well. So, look, let's break down some NBA talk. And yes, sir. what we thought of uh, James Harden's debut and or how he's played so far. What do you think? I mean, I don't think he's played bad, personally. Okay. And I think it's been more of a team thing than than just James Harden. You know, I mean, he, he came out in his debut and, and he did his thing. You know, he, he played well, facilitated the ball, he did a little bit of scoring, and he was efficient. I think game one was more Paul George thinking it up, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know, <laughs> and that's kind of how it. That's kind of how it went. Yeah, no, there's a little bit of that in there. No, James, I don't. Just... Okay, you you going? No, I, I I felt like James played his style of basketball, and the parts around him quite didn't get up there yet. You know, I just think that's it's a learning thing with pieces like this. You've got four very ball dominant guys. Mm-hmm. I think that's just hard to combat. So, and that's you... yeah. That's also what I think it is. I think it's just a bunch of guys that need to learn how to play team basketball with each other. This is a bunch of guys that, um, what? I mean, these four grown men that we've got to Yes, I know, right? But it's every single one of them have their style, you know? I know. You had you had this one game where James Harden hits Kawhi Leonard with a dot in the in the corner where he can just catch and shoot. Yeah, Kawhi not being used to being a catch and shoot player. He feels like he's got to do his thing, takes a one dribble pull up, doesn't go in when he had a clean look at a wide open shot, right? Dude, Sal James do the same thing, catch the ball, and, yeah, dribble, and, and I like... think for James and James's thing is, and he's done this when he first got to when he was in Brooklyn, he he did this, and when he was in Philadelphia, he did this. Where his first few games after the debut on the honeymoon, it looks rough because he's now trying to figure out, okay. How do I play with these other guys right here? Right. To make them happy a little bit. Right. Because the way James Harden plays, he's gonna take the ball, he's gonna dribble, dribble it out. He's gonna, you know, get his ISO, he's gonna hit you in the corner if you're open. That's right. These guys around him are not used to being corner sitters or just, you know, watching the ball. And the know. Clippers, you know, it, it, it's really weird because the Clippers now they were already leading the league in isolation isolation possessions per team. Yeah. They go ahead and add James Harden. So it's just there's no fluidity to that team. It's just they have to. Some Golden State passing. Something, right? I yeah. think that's something where something that's going to require all of them to lock in and yeah. all of them to change their style, which I know James Harden just said that's not what he does. Or start moving that lineup around, right? Don't yeah. play them all at once. Move someone to the bench. It could be James or it could be Russell coming right. off the bench, working the second unit. I think Russell would be better to work the second unit because it's something he's done already. Totally. Um, you know, in his other teams. I don't or, think happy in this moment. If you want to start all of them, you know, start them all, but just leave Russell out there when the other guys get subbed. Yeah. You know, I think it's got to – but one thing they absolutely need to learn how to do is how to play with the four of them on the court together, right? They have to close out the lineup. They have to That's have a closeout. Yep. Those four guys with Zubak, they got to be the. Because you're telling be. me in the last few minutes, you're going to have James Harden sitting, Russell Westbrook sitting, Paul George. Or, like, none of those guys can sit in, you know, because any one of those guys can go ahead and win you that game. Yeah. No, seriously. Yeah. So they, they, they need to figure something out because none of those guys, with what Philly lacks right now in that lineup is role players. Mm hmm. Because role players, you know, a championship team has great role players. Mm. You have no one used to playing a role. Everyone there is used to being the guy. It's like an all-star team over there, you know? It's That's right. exactly what they are. They're an all-star team who can't play basketball. <laughs> team basketball. Yeah, it's hard to – yeah, you can – yeah, you can uh, we can you can make every shot in the world, every one of these guys. They can do it, but they can't make the pass when they need to make the pass. So, like, we'll see. So – you know, this it's every it's every everything every basketball player, uh, ISO basketball player fears his team basketball. It's like 
And it, it, it's a whole bunch of players that fit that category, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. in this NBA, yeah, man, it, it's it. I don't know. I don't know if that's like a, a tribute to like AA AAU ball or or. I mean, a lot of these guys that uh, didn't play AAU ball like that. They weren't with, like James Harden. Wasn't an AAU ball guy, right? He played high school basketball, went to college, got drafted. Um, Luca yeah. played overseas. Yeah. You know, like Luca played Euro basketball. He played the, you know, the other style of basketball. Trey Young was an AAU guy, you know. Yeah. Well, he's a little he, bit different. He's an ISO guy, like heavy ball, ball dominant. So, like, who I else just, we got? It comes from, like, I, I mean, I just. I don't know. Yeah, it's it's an interesting. Thing. I mean, it's just you saw one guy do it and be so successful at it, and you know you think, hey, I'm good at basketball too, or I can also play the style. Um, you know, I'm like that because NBA is a copycat league. Oh yeah, you and know, you see one, you see one person do something successful, you know, like, oh, let me try it myself. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. Has talent forward and and try to be the best versions of whomever's tried to do it before them and or you know the best versions of themselves and sometimes that turns out to be lebron james or, or a michael jordan or a kobe bryant or you know uh, whatever the case is now you know uh maybe like a big vic you know, <laughs> you know maybe you never know but yeah so man there's some there's other teams out here this season that are kind of shocking you know you got teams with injuries kind of riddle that we didn't mention this in the rundown but team i'm going to throw out real quick is the suns man yeah uh, this team's been fighting a hey, shout out kevin durant a lineup yeah right yeah i mean they're fighting having guys literally playing basketball bookers out beals out uh, they they don't have a point guard at all to begin with they don't they, have a point guard at all just hooping man he's just out there hooping he don't care who's with him he's just hooping and 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 by the end of the season, KD seems to sometimes care who's out there with him. So these yeah. injuries. I mean, when you've done it long enough and it hasn't been working, that's. I understand he's gonna have a problem, right? He right now he's averaging thirty points per game. How's that doing it? Putting the team on his back, and they're losing. Yeah. The Phoenix Suns right now are four and five, with Kevin Durant averaging thirty and having his guys in and out of rotation. They haven't had the chance to really play basketball with each other and ask something you can't happen. They need to seriously prioritize having all three of their guys healthy to build that chemistry. Cause right now it's the Kevin Durant show. And I tell you, man, that Beal, Beal in that back, I t that's so big. That's big. Back injuries are very that's serious for athletes. You hate to see those. After the age of 30, come on, man. Mm. We're just talking about something that's really, I mean, I'm dealing, I deal with the back every day and I tell you, it is brutal. I don't want to play basketball, but I can imagine running up and down a court with it wouldn't be a very fun time. Uh, but th it, truth be told, that's the team I'm worried about and they should be worried. Yeah. They should be worried too. A team. So do you hit the panic button? Oh, uh, right now? No, because you have Kevin Durant, you're middling 500. And you've got the Lakers losing, Thunder losing. You know, you've got teams also going to be fighting for a playoff play-in position. Houston somehow, you know, up there. Like, you've got teams, Memphis tanking. <laughs> no, no, like, you've got opportunity. Hey, I can I mention that later. But that's low-key a blessing in disguise for Memphis. Um, but no, and it is. But so – point being is there's kind of wiggle room some of these losses for the suns i think this is okay it's okay right now a panic button i think if if it if 20 games into the season they're still under 500 i think we we need to start talking so you think like nine games in a team like the suns like you know they shouldn't worry about the early games right no i think they're okay i think if they, okay. they can make a play in and just like the lakers did last year be a seven seed or whatever and, and just go all the way that's that's possible hey Fire that plane that plane is scary because it just takes one game i know it is scary but they've got the firepower you got kd for yeah. one and that's, I but mean, i mean you still you don't want to be in a one game situation where anything can happen imagine that one game kevin durant decides he's not going to have a good game and whoever they're playing against decides yeah. to go for 50 you know this is like it's I tough, think. but yeah, I get they can win it. 
it's just not a scenario you'd like to find yourself in. Oh no, because they're gonna end up there at the end of the year with no chemistry. And that's mm-hmm. that's what I'm looking and at. That's right that's now. not the way you win basketball games. They might as well not only that, but they're also out the gate playing one of the top two teams. Yeah. No, it's true. It's true. With no, no chemistry. But yeah, no. So that's well. So speaking of chemistry, two guys started off last season looking like uh they had no chemistry at all. And right now in the Dallas Mavericks, Luka Doncic. Kyrie Irving, looking like a team and a tandem that might work. What do you think of what's going on in in Dallas uh, so far? Man, what, second in the West, seven and two. I can't even lie. When the season started, I was a doubter I because you know they they started off hot. They started off um winning. They were like the top three seed, and I think they still are top. They yes, they still are. And I thought, well. They haven't played any real games yet. The defense is going to come back to bite them. Yep. You know, they haven't, you know, really beat no one. They're To me, they're just really unproven. But they've kept dominating. And, and they, yeah, putting up points. Right. And this is a team that's acknowledged. Hey, listen, you may put up points on us. We're going to put up more. Yeah, no. And seriously. that's exactly what Luke has been doing. He's been putting up more. Uh, right just now, came I, off a 40, 40, 40 point game versus the Clippers. Yeah. And I mean, for one, Luca owns the Clippers, all right? Ever since the bubble, <laughs> Luca it. owns the Clippers. Bubble bitch. But, <laughs> but no, they've, they've kept it going. I mean, looking after wins right here. Well, even uh, Luca's right. His stats right now averaging all the, all the good stuff uh, on the team, you know, at points, rebounds, and assists, all highs. On the team, thirty two point nine assists, eight or uh, thirty two uh, thirty two point nine points, uh, eight point nine rebounds, and eight point four assists. So the dude's almost averaging a triple double, and uh, look, making it look real nice. He's such a nice looking basketball player, man. He's so he's smooth. Good. Like his, he's so off with his movements. He's hard to time, and you can tell that. Like a lot of people, a lot of players have gone to say that, like Luca, he just moves awkward. Does it, like you like, can't really tell what he, yeah it's weird subtly fast but slow like it's like it's so awkward. It's smooth you know it's like like there's one motion like, yeah he, he doesn't have like a, a tell like you know when when he's about to do it no he, he which doesn't. is very it's very weird and it, like it's funny because then it also just looks effortless at the same time well, you no know, it does and because he yeah that's what's a tribute to, that's a, like to me that shows like how long he's been a professional. He's got so many tools in his bag that it's really hard to measure him. I mean, like, hey, he's been boy. playing professionally since he's a teenager, you know, like 15, 16, something like that, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. You, you tend to develop that thing, and I think that's something the team should look out for. Yeah, um, his, uh, just looking forward into the draft, right? Would, just find those argue, guys that have been professionals. Yeah, I would argue that, yeah, Luca's probably top three – IQ in the league. Uh, I really, I, he's just, he's got, I mean, he had a pass the other night where he like chucked it back and it was a bounce pass. Like it was, I was just like, this guy is just crazy. He has a lot of those. How did he see that moment? Yeah. Like it's, it's really impressive. So I look at a guy like that and I'm like, this is the face of the NBA very soon. And that's what you think. Yeah, I do. There's some I, competition, but I can see Luca doing it. Luke has got he's got he's got the youth. I think he's got like the uh funny, he's kind of funny, you know, where he's where, in a way he's unintentionally funny. Uh, Jokic is kind of closed off and he's might be more Jokic powerful. is also unintentionally funny. But he's a little more closed off. Like he still likes to be with his family unit and likes he likes that more than anything. You and, see that clip where where Jokic went to the post game interview? All right, guys, I know what you're gonna ask me. I'm just gonna answer all of it right now. <laughs> <laughs> it was good but yeah very, Luca's like that in a way too where he's not really on you know active on social medias too much he has more of a management team but there's a lot of his stuff he's like yeah he's also more laid back not with the media but he's better at it than Jokic is you got Ant out there that could be a potential face of the league you if know? he gets out of Minnesota yeah yeah, I mean, even if he can get a good start there to really put a stamp on it and then, yeah, leave Minnesota. Uh, <laughs> I agree with that. 
but yeah, there's a few guys out there that could totally be the Giannis has that opportunity still. I mean, he's he's if he he's, has the longevity, you know, he's he's yeah. still relatively young. You know, he yeah. has a lot in the tank, it looks like. But yeah, Giannis yeah. has a chance. Yeah, we need whoever we're looking for to be the next face of the league needs to have like LeBron longevity or close to it. Yeah. Give me Jeff Green longevity. There you go. <laughs> Forever though, <laughs> you could be out here. That's playing forever out here. Mm-hmm. You, Udonis Haslam's, you know, of the yep. world. The Dirk Udonis one. Haslam was a good one. Dirk. Yeah, no, I hear Shout you. Shout out man. Dirk. Oh no, I feel that. I feel that. So, all right, then they're they're definitely uh, a team to watch in the Mavericks this year. Like I said, I just so far so good. You know, the the Kyrie experiment, the trade looks like it's worked out. Denver, are they? Denver. <laughs> Denver is so scary. I don't know. Like, I don't know what to tell you. Like, you know, if if you thought it was free, just because Denver lost pieces, you're wrong. They're still good. Wow, They're yeah. functioning like a well-oiled machine right now. It's, and it's Jokic is the conductor of that machine. And as long as he's playing, there's no there's no way you beat them. That's how I feel. It's how it looks. Even with Jamal Murray, even literally without a main cog in the system. No problem. Dominant. Like, yep. this, he doesn't care. And even when he, like, I, like I, said, I was at that Thunder game, he doesn't look like he cares. It's just like he's out there and it's effortless. It's really impressive. Jokic, it's, 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 man, he bodies folks and he doesn't even care. He's just out there hooping. The Nuggets right now have the fourth best point differential in the NBA at, plus 9.4 points and have the number four ranked offense in the NBA with number eight defense. You know, they're still very good, especially defensively. Like the Nuggets don't look like a team that would be a good defensive team long because they have, because they have Jokic who's not the best defender. He's a good defender. Like he's, he's improved his defense a lot to where he's respectable. Oh, for sure. Right. Yeah, that was his biggest. But by no no means he's not Embiid defensively. They have Michael Porter Jr. starting, who's not a good defender. Let's go head to head, Embiid and Jokic. You know who wins that battle. Come on. Yeah, I mean, you know, Embiid usually takes that one, but I win that. But that's what I'm saying. Like defensively, they don't look like they're the best, but they're top eight, and I think part of that goes to how well coached they are defensively, and just the other pieces they have around. Aaron Gordon is I a just... sneaky underrated good defender. Oh, he, I think that guy. If you if you you talk about uh, uh your boy Dylan, Dylan the villain before, right? Yeah, we I, we gonna get to him. I I like uh, I like this guy Gordon, man. I, yeah, I, I Aaron Gordon has all defense potential. This, like, you know, he's he's yeah. that good. He's locked in. He's changed his role. He's all there all the time, dude. Like, and that's what this Denver team gives. And I think and that's, he takes yeah. It's not. It's not like they're great defensively. It's that they're great with effort. They're mm-hmm. just there. Like they, I, I don't give a damn. They what fight. It, they're just there. They're trying, and whether they, they're just in your way, like they're tall, they're long, man. They're just there. I, I just think Mike Malone's told them just be in their way, be present, be physical, and they've done that, and they, they've done a really good job with their basketball. They're suffocating. And what I've especially <laughs> loved, they are. And what I love about Aaron Gordon is every night he takes the best defender, the best player on the other team. He takes the option and he does a good job. He he tries his, you know, with all of his heart. He oh. plays and then that team supports him. So together, collectively, they are a great defensive team. And you already know as long as they got their pieces, top four, right now, the fourth re- fourth best offense in the league. And that's according to him, uh, cleaning the glass. You know, that's the the side I prefer to use for those type of stats. Yeah, yeah, throw them out there. Shout them out. Yeah, that's dope. And what I like about them is that they um they filter out garbage time minutes and everything. So it's a more accurate representation. Like NBA, if you go to NBA.com, it it counts your garbage time minutes. It counts um uh, last second heaves. You know, they filter all that out. So it's a more accurate rep- representation. That's, that's what awesome. I like about it. Yeah, so man, there's some there's some teams out here still uh Still uh, showing out, even from last year. So you had the MVP last season, right? Jump mm-hmm. over the B side, right? 
your boy, Joel Embiid. How you feel about <laughs> Philadelphia 76ers this season and what they've looked like without James Harden? The Sixers this season surprised me. Hmm. I did not think that they'd be as good as they are right now through the amount of games they've played. Hot, man. They, 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 they took their one loss to, to Milwaukee the first game of the season and never looked back. And they, in that game... Really, yeah, that was game. Yeah, that, even that was a winnable game too, right? Yeah. Well, that was game going crazy and a very winnable basketball. Yeah, look great at home. They look fantastic at home. I think Joel Embiid is looking like a back-to-back MVP potential, like right now. He's looking – he's on pace for it. I mean, really, he's going to be in the argument getting towards the end of the season. And, man, they've played good basketball. They've played against good teams and beaten good teams. So they have they have a win over the Celtics, right? Just yeah. recently recently dominated the not dominated, but they had a good game against the um the Pistons. They played Washington where Embiid just went crazy, you know, there's no stopping Embiid when he gets going, right? And yeah, this is what I what I like what I've noticed also is, you know, the coaching change helps a lot. Big time. Nick Nurse has them boys hooping. And you know it's funny. So they 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 got rid of one system and introduced a whole new one, and that system is called Joel Embiid. But I think because the way they're playing, it's exclusively through him. They are making Embiid the system. He's showing that he is that good to where he can operate a basketball team, and that's what he's been doing, right? One hundred percent. And he has the help from uh, Tyrese Maxey, who's made a a huge jump, an even bigger jump than we thought he would make. Right? He's out there. Averaging like twenty five, almost thirty points a game. He might get most Crazy. improved. He he just might with with the numbers that he's been putting up. Even in like with the with the season he had last year, it's pretty hard to win because he had a good season. No, he but did. Now he is showing insane improvements. And now that James Harden is is gone, he the point guard duties and you know the ball handling is left to him. And oh, he's yeah. taken that role and he's thrived in it. And I love that about Maxi. He's made huge plays for Philadelphia. He's stepped up in every way that you know you can think that you, he can step up. Yeah. Is there any any uh questions there at the top of the, the rankings right now? So you got the Celtics also up there. Celtics, uh you you feel pretty similar to last year about this Celtics team. The Celtics are the Celtics, they're running through the competition. They're just, you, you wait till the postseason, see what they're really about. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm gonna look through midseason, see how they look. If they still look strong, we ride. I feel that. I get that. Okay, one team, another team. Um, the Bucks. We kind of mentioned their first. Mm. Yep. They're kind of iffy. They are actually seventh right now in the East. Not so hot. Right, right there above five hundred, five and four. It's really early in the season. Rankings really don't matter, but. Their defense kind of does matter, and they have not played great defense so far to start the season. Do you think that's a credit to having Dame on the team? Do you think that's just collectively age? Do you think they're trying less? Do you think that's coaching? What's up? I think it goes into a combination of getting rid of Drew Holiday and new coaching. Hmm. Because defensively, it feels like they're running a different system defensively. (laughs) <laughs> they're not making the same they're not making you know the same plays on defense that they used to be making when they were under Mike Budenholzer they allowed the least amount of layups or shots at the rim in the league they ran you off the three-point line they basically told you if you're gonna win you're gonna beat us with, with mid-range shots and every team's okay with that right if you lose some mid-ranges that's fine now it looks like they're giving up more more shots at the rim and their rim efficiency is also drop too you know they're allowing more made shots at the rim which is another thing and when it comes to just giving up three pointers you don't have that guy that can run you off the line anymore you no. don't have the you don't have the guy that can fight over screens and still get in, get in contest you who was that guy and middleton prior to injury was your lockdown defender he you was know? your guy and, you know anytime you needed to guard a wing middleton he was there you needed to guard a guard Holiday was there. Back in the day, was 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 the guy for them as well, who was actually a pretty good defender for a Brogdon was a great defender. 
So and yeah. so overall, this team just they had a few guys over the years. They have lost a few guys to the point where now they're they're what what their defender now is Malik Beasley. Okay, Jay Crowder. Jay Crowder's a good defender, but he's not he's not the defender. He can't be your defender. He can he can guard, but he's not the defender. Malik Beasley is not a defender. No, nah, but nah. they have him. They have him trying and respect because they got him trying. Portis is a good defender. Cameron, but Payne. he's not going to keep. He he doesn't have the the quickness. Yeah, so that that's that's it. So yeah, no, I it's I don't think there's something for that. They've they lost don't. pieces and they're playing a different system, and the the one piece that they still have is not the same. They used to have Chris Middleton out there guarding Kevin Durant, and he would hold his own. They lost P.J. Tucker a few years back, too. P.J. Tucker was that guy that they had. Bobby Portis kind of filled that void, but not enough. Not like P.J. I'm saying it's just not enough. And I love Bobby Portis, but P.J. Tucker's different. He's different. I know. I know you got that. (laughs) I love P.J. too. (laughs) I know, man. Yeah, and I I feel that. And and seriously, truth be told, this, man, this NBA season is pretty spicy right now. I like it. It's going to be a fun a lot of storylines that could be brewing. Yeah, I mean, look at look at L.A. Man, LeBron's playing a thousand minutes to make them barely floating. Well, look at the Laker, Lakers, are barely floating, four and five. LeBron, pay, you know, playing every minute. That's and that's that's the crazy part. The uh, the fact that they LeBron has had to do that every week just for them to be mediocre. Yeah. Yeah. Like they're not even good right now. Oh. They are mediocre to bad. Mediocre. And you know what? What the what, what I find to be the craziest part too. Nah, what's that? LeBron James, start of the season, right? Coach Darvin Ham went up to the podium and he said LeBron James is going to be on a twenty-eight minutes per game restriction. Uh huh. LeBron James has averaged thirty-five minutes per game. Yeah, I know. And it's because they've needed him. <laughs> they yeah. they need to win quarters one, one through three so that LeBron can rest the fourth. They need to be up by 10. Well, dude, yeah. You can't yeah. afford to have 40 year old LeBron playing 40 minutes a night and then come playoff time, he's gassed. LeBron James is trying to pres- preserve as much as his as much of his career that he can. He wants to play with his kids. He doesn't want to play 35 minutes a night. Oh, yeah. No, yeah, it's a tough one. And right now, yeah, if you look at the Lakers plus minus LeBron in the game, LeBron in, they're winning, right? Without yeah. LeBron, they're losing, like, horribly. And LeBron's also not the same LeBron. He can't go out there and not dominate winning. and get you to win as like he could in, like, 2018, you know? Yeah. Well, he was it's right. not that same LeBron. LeBron on your team doesn't automatically mean playoff roster, playoffs anymore. And we've seen that with the Lakers. They've missed the playoffs a good amount of times with LeBron. Yeah, no, I know. I know. So I know. what do you think the problem is then for the Lakers? What what do you think they need? And don't say Anthony Davis because it's just not gonna happen. It's just not gonna happen. That's the only thing they can do. <laughs> There's okay. literally nothing they can do other what than if? Go ahead, go ahead. Other than what? Leaves it can play his role. They're, you know, they're trying. He's. I saw that LeBron's trying to get Reddish involved more. You little things like that in the beginning of the season will work well for the end of the season. So, like, I'm I'm seeing LeBron play smart right now, trying to get other guys involved because he knows AD might not be available. So, mm-hmm. with that, AD has to be available. That's the only thing for the Lakers in their ticket right now. But even when Anthony Davis has been available, what what have they done? He's been midi- he's been medium. I agree, but like we know what he's capable of. We know that this guy's literally top five capable on offense and defense. He's that freaking talented. He just okay. doesn't put it out. He just doesn't put it out. You know, I don't know. I don't you know, know what I think though. What's up? The Lakers can be a sneaky contender because you know every season there's a star that wants out. Uh, yeah, but for what? Tra- who are they going to? Tra- we don't know who. The no, Bulls. Do- the Bulls could potentially blow it up this season. And they should. DeRozan. Yeah, they should. Levine, DeRozan think, might not be the answer, but Zach Levine could be if but, if he becomes available. I with that they'd have to get rid of D'Lo, and I. I, that's also I don't think that's a. I don't well, think they mind if it means they get wins. 
D'Angelo Russell isn't that third star. You know, no, he's he's a have- good player, but he is not that third star that gets you over that hump. Close. So he can make free throws, but he doesn't make smart decisions at the end of basketball games. That's what I'm saying. So that, that's what I think it's going to take for them to be a good team. They're just going to have to go out there. Whatever team blows it up, yeah. they, they have contracts. They can. They may not have picks. No pick. They have no no pick equity, yeah, but they have contracts top and top they top. have assets. That roster looks all right. The roster looks okay. So they definitely have people to move if they had to. But, yeah. man, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, halfway th- – Halfway through the season, excuse me. Uh, yeah, we'll we'll see. But I think right now LeBron's just trying to get the others involved when he knows Anthony might not be there. So we'll find out, I guess, what happens. <laughs> we'll talk about that next week. But man, just before we end the show, we're gonna we're gonna sprinkle in some talk of the NFL and uh, got a little bit of time. Yeah, we got a little sprinkle time. Sprinkle time. And before we do that, man. See my cowboys over there in the corner. They shit the bed today. What the hell happened? <laughs> what the hell happened? I don't want to talk about it. Look, the 49ers have a game today or tomorrow. Uh, they've got a game. And and they've got a game against the Jags in Jacksonville, right? 49ers have lost three in a row coming off a bye. Is this a must win going into Jacksonville? Yeah. It has to be. I feel like it's a must win for both teams, really. Must win for both. It's Love a must it. win for both teams because you got you. Yeah. You never want to go on a four game losing streak in the NFL, right? Right. How now many- the the Niners are still going to be over five hundred. If they lost, it'd be five and four. But you don't want to take that fourth loss. You got major questions about Purdy if you lose this game, and especially you know it's it's yeah, and you know you want the highest seed possible because you want the best playoff matchup possible as well. You know now the Niners. I don't think. If they're once they get rolling, I don't think they care who they play. But still, you know, the easier the better. You just, you know, and it's just for momentum. You can't have that bad because think about the the morale in the locker room once you've lost four in a row. I'm telling you, it's not good. And the more you lose, the harder it is back to the harder it is to get back on track. Now the Jaguars, Jaguars also got to win a game, man. Because I mean, they're they're sitting pretty right now. They're at the top of the division, but the Texans are coming. Top of the division, and they are what tied second or third in the in the in the conference. Yep. So this is also a good like measuring stick game too. Yeah, it is for Jacksonville. For them, if they win this game against an NFC opponent that that is this good, you know, on paper, then they they're a formidable opponent. This this is like a potential Super Bowl match. Legitimate, yep. Like this this put that puts them in a legit conversation of Super Bowl contender. And the 49ers just picked up Chase Young. Let's not forget that, okay? Yep, their defense just got better. He literally is now their league, their leader in sacks on the team and hasn't made a sack for the team yet. He had five in Washington and has got more than anybody on this team going in. So, like, this team is dangerous defensively in the 49ers, and definitely we'll see if they can combat ETN, you know, Trevor Lawrence's huge neck, and – uh <laughs> you know all those uh good receivers they've got out there right now no seriously i think this is a really good football matchup and definitely one to watch on the schedule another nooner another nooner we got the ravens and the browns is that's this a fun a one must win for any of them uh, if it's a must win for anyone it could be the browns yeah it's a division. the ravens are the ravens are good they're sitting pretty right now seven and two the Browns are five and three. They um after a rough start to the season, able to pick it up, come back. That defense has looked legit. Yeah, the number so, one in the league, and Deshaun coming off a pretty good game last week. Deshaun maybe maybe not a must win game, but like hey, it would be really nice if you won that game. You know, yeah for for the Browns especially losing to Baltimore earlier in the season without uh Deshaun. And now Deshaun came back, like I said, beat Arizona, a team they should have beat, but looked good in doing it. Uh, 27 to nothing. He threw two touchdowns. So now a divisional opponent. Can you slow down Lamar? Can you slow down the run game? Can you slow down the pass game? Lamar, I mean, they've done a lot this season to show Lamar is being, he's got MVP so far, you know, right there under his name. And hey, yep. 
the Ravens have been rolling, you know, they're coming off. I mean, two of their last three games have been blowouts. Yeah, thirty eight to six against the Lions, and thirty seven to three against the Seahawks. The defenses look really good too over there in in Baltimore. So both two teams they beat like that contenders as yep. well. So, both playoff teams. So definitely something to watch there. Uh, there. I think there's a couple other games on the schedule that we were looking at, and that was the Lions versus the Chargers. That one could be fun. Yeah, this is a fun That's offense potential. to watch right here. This might be the funnest, maybe the most points scored in the whole NFL this week. I'd like. You think to this think is the shootout? It has potential shootout written all over it. I mean, I mean, yep, the Chargers are a high-powered offense, so are the Lions, so. Yeah, they've got the Lions need it. The Lions, after getting shellacked a couple weeks ago by the Ravens, they just pulled off a win against the Raiders, and now they need to keep that going against the Chargers. But hey, the Chargers need it too. They're four and four coming off a loss to the, to the Cowboys. Oh, and the Chargers do need this. They just beat the Jets. They and and everything, but I think the Chargers. They okay. To me, of the two teams that need this win the more are, is the Lions because they were being talked about as an NFC like finalist. Like they were going to be going, you know, the NFC championship game potentially of how mm -hmm. easy their schedule was going to finish. They were going to finish with the number one record and, you know, have the bye and everything. So to me, Detroit has to win this football game to be that kind of team to end the season. So this so is. So you think this win will legitimize them, basically, is what you're saying? Uh, well, yeah, legitimize. I think it'll prove to me that they are who we kind of think they are right now. So, yes. Yeah, uh, so to speak. Another okay. game on schedule, Texans at Bengals. Okay. Mm, that's a fun one. Proud Burrow. Both coming off really good games. Joe, um, uh, C.J. Stroud coming, uh, coming right off of the best rookie performance in NFL history. Ooh. Joe Burrow starting to pick it back up after his mandated horrible start to the season. <laughs> He's allowed that. <laughs> it happens. He's smooth as ice, man. He called Joey B. Man, uh, man, that should be a fun matchup. I um, I don't know. Talk to me. What do you What do you think about it? Well, it depends on if the receivers play. I've heard T. Higgins may be out. I do know that uh, Chase, I think, is upgraded to questionable. <laughs> so, um. I think if he's got his receivers and he's got his weapons, Joe Burrow is going to keep it cool and he's going to win this game. If not, I really do see a problem, man, because CJ Stroud's proved he doesn't need weapons. He's just going to be the dopest rookie on the field. He's going to bring the Texans to some victories, man. It's really impressive what this guy is doing. I'm very impressed with CJ Stroud. Definitely rookie of the year right now. Definitely. Uh, honestly, I that's the way I see it. It's really dependent on if the receivers play for Cincinnati. That's my take. Okay. Um, I think that this also has potential to be a high powered offense. If it's not the Lions Chargers game, this could also be the highest scoring game of the season just because one, yeah, CJ Stroud is so good. He can just make things happen. And the Bengals, if they have their receiving core, also a dangerous team that you should be scared of. But yeah, this one it should be fun. All right, man. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. This was set the record. I'm Malcolm Anthony. This is Cody right here. Look, we are on Instagram and Twitter, uh, Twitter, TikTok, all the stuff. Look, check us out. Meditate. Make it go away. Yeah.